Hey everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast episode one hundred. Oh boy, this is a very special episode for me. Um, obviously, a hundred episodes of anything is a lot, uh, and I don't know how many of you guys know this out there. The podcast was literally all Nintendo Prime was for a long time. It was just a podcast. We did nothing else. <laughs> Pretty much. There was like a website that was in and out, but really didn't exist. And then there was this. This, like, r- literally my journey to becoming a YouTuber. This is my beginning and probably the end of my journey someday. <laughs> I think the Nintendo Prime podcast will be, uh, if I ever stop making YouTube videos, I think the last video I ever make will be the final Nintendo Prime podcast. Don't know what episode that'll be. I'm hoping it's episode like 18,000. Yeah. Because I think that'll take me until I'm dead. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done the math uh, yeah, right, on that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 it's a very special occasion. Um, I did. I, I tried hard, guys. I, I, I begged Darren to yes, come on, right? Because I wanted to make this a true throwback episode, right? Uh, because for those who don't know, the very first episode in the Hunter Prime podcast ever was me, Eric, and Darren Har. Um, mm-hmm. It was originally supposed to be a three-man podcast. And uh, actually, we make a, quite a few promises. Once, in that, once that, we uh, became, yeah, there was a lot of promises first, in that first, first episode podcast, that yeah. never came true. Yeah, uh, but once uh, we became a weekly podcast, Darren went bye bye. I think it conveniently worked for him that we would only do it when he was available. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there's. And now he's, he's only available like once every three months, so it didn't work out. And then I even tried to get Five J to come in, Five J Gaming. You guys might remember him. He used to do live streams on our channel. He's a great guy. You should go check yeah. out his YouTube channel and his Twitch channel. Uh, just Five J Gaming. That's what he uses everywhere. And uh, well, he would have been on uh, as a nice replacement, but he's sick. So I wish you well, 5J. Hopefully yeah, uh, yeah. you're feeling better. Maybe we can get you on next week if you're feeling better. I know episode 101, not as yeah. special as episode 100. But, uh, man, we've come a long way. You know what? Let's just – I know I didn't have four topics. We're just going to make a fourth topic right now. Okay. Um, and before we get into that, I should remind you guys to, hey, you're watching this live, so a lot of you. If you're not and watching this on Monday when it normally comes out, welcome. If you would like to watch it live, $10 back around patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Uh, every Thursday is when we do the recording, and that's when you can see it live every single week um, as we record it. Or for five dollars a month on Patreon, you could get the audio version early by a full day. Otherwise, the normal podcast comes out at 10 a.m. on YouTube and Podbean every Monday. Now, that being said, that out of the way. Oh, I'm Nathaniel Rofajan. That's Eric Moore. I don't know if we. I don't <laughs> no, even. No, no, I don't think we did. We even did that stuff. Um, I kind of want to reminisce a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I guess, you know, before I, I, I do the reminiscing, I should mention that we are going to have a giveaway, a special giveaway announced during this podcast. Um, some of you savvy people out there probably already noticed that there is a giveaway link already down in the description because there's no way in, there's no way for me to be like, oh, giveaway link is not in the description at all. It doesn't exist. What yeah. am I talking about? But there, obviously, you could already go enter. But I implore you stick around to figure out what the giveaway is and why the giveaway is what it is. Um, but we'll get into that in a topic, I guess, two topics from now. Uh, so the first topic I guess I want to talk about is strictly podcast and, I guess, Nintendo Prime related. Because, again, 100 episodes of this bad boy. Um, like, is there any particular episodes that, like, stand out from you from the past 100? Uh, like, any anything where you're like, man, that you know, that was a really good podcast. We did that one. Time. I, I can think of one in particular that's always going to stick with me. But the, what, the Smash cast? I mean, how can you not? Yeah, how, can, how can you forget Smash cast? I mean, the Smash podcast, for those yeah. who don't know, was uh, we had, um, she says, bounced in randomly yeah uh he was originally supposed to be on then he said he couldn't be on and then all of a sudden he just showed up halfway in yes, yes he did darren was there yes um we had player essence on, yes uh who did not like my opinions on the gamecube nope, controller not. especially uh and my opinion on items in <laughs> competitive smash no, no he did not um she says didn't like that opinion much either no. but at least he thought he's like oh you know what the kind of player you are is kind of silly yeah um i think it was it right that was yeah. the group yeah yeah um that was a really fun podcast. That was. Uh, it that was the was. most people we've had on a podcast, I think, total, because we had five? Mm-hmm. We had five people on, and we we struggled to get a third on most of the time, unless yeah, it's right. a Patreon member. Yeah, right. So, 
uh, yeah, it's it was kind of nice having that. That was back in the day. One thing I will say Darren was good for was getting guests. Yeah, um, yeah he was. I'm not as good at it because I don't have time. I forget to ask people to be on the podcast, if I'm being completely honest. Mm-hmm. And then when I do ask, like I did for this episode, it's, it's no. It's the day of. Or or even when it's the day before, it's yeah. no. Yeah. Like I've, I've asked HMK a few times. He's been on some episodes. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time he was on, there was a particular question I held that because he's the hype man. I don't know no. if you guys, yeah. he gets he gets overly hyped about things. <laughs> uh, it's it's good times. But it's like any any particular memories, like you have, even if it's just us two. And you I, trashing on me because you I, and my fiance are the best at making me oh, feel like garbage. There is that. Um, <laughs> no, the ones that stick out to me the most are always our betting specials because oh, okay. for some ungodly reason, I'm always the one that loses and takes the punishment. And That's right. Yeah. I'm undefeated in betting specials. Podcast betting specials. Podcast betting specials. I did yes. lose. Well, technically, the one that wasn't I lost really wasn't a betting special. Betting it special. was a video yeah. game competition yeah. stream. Yeah. And you beat me at the game. So yeah. then I got punished right, and I right. ended up throwing up, which is cool. Yeah. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, still having found a punishment that makes Eric throw up. But uh, it's okay. We've uh, we've had a lot of fun on this channel. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of other videos I do. A lot of you guys out there um, probably know me from the news videos, uh, know me from the prime news videos, know me from standalone news videos, discussion videos, uh, maybe a video that went viral or two. I think my most viewed video as Nintendo prime, cause a lot of people be like, Oh, my body is ready. Like that was a video that's been on this channel for like a decade. But, um, I'm talking about like in terms of what I've done as Nintendo prime. Oh, you know, there was that hacking video mm-hmm. that blew up to, you know, Nintendo blocked hackers or whatever that blew up to 300,000 and the whole hacking community now hates me. I don't think there's a single Nintendo switch hacker out there that views me in a positive light so uh there's that oh you know what no there's one i think zachary kurtz he shows up to live streams once in a while and he doesn't hate me i don't think because he still shows up uh-huh but uh maybe he didn't watch that video so maybe not oh well, now you just lost one more sub and now he's gonna look <laughs> it up now he's gonna look it up uh and that's another interesting like we're in the midst like we, we're at episode 100 and nintendo prime's actually doing the worst it's ever done yeah, that's crazy. We're getting lower viewership per video now than we were when we started doing Nintendo Prime. Crazy. Yeah. Um, I, in the span of the last week, have lost over 150 subs and haven't had a single positive sub gain day, and there doesn't appear to be an end in sight. Every single day I wake up, do more videos, and by the end of the day we've lost another 20 or 30 subs. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. I don't know, like, is YouTube doing a long purge? Normally YouTube's purges are like a day or two. So I don't think this is YouTube purge. I think what this is is the fallout from the Nintendo Prime podcast or the Nintendo Prime Nintendo Switch giveaway because that's still ongoing. Uh, but Glean.io temporarily closed it a week ago because YouTube changed their policies about giveaways mm-hmm. and they didn't want my channel to get to get like a strike. Mm-hmm. Well, they after talking to YouTube and stuff, YouTube said, well, if the giveaway was already ongoing before the policy change, you're allowed to finish it. Okay. So I reopened nice. the giveaway. I just, I'm not supposed to mention it really in Oops. a video. So like it's still ongoing, yeah. but I can't advertise it. So right. the link for it is in the description of every video, but it doesn't matter because people don't read the description unless you tell them to. Mm-hmm. That's something I've quickly discovered as a YouTuber that unless you get, tell people a reason to go to the description, they don't do it. Yeah. So what happened is because Gleam.io sent out all the, oh, giveaway ended, what's happening is all the people that entered the giveaway are saying, oh, it ended, now I can unsub. Yeah. So I'm really just losing the subs that weren't watching my content anyways. So it's yeah, not really a, but, like a net loss per yeah. se because I'm just losing people who didn't right, care. Right. They were just here for the giveaway. Yeah. But at the same time, it is a little discouraging to like see oh, how yeah, hard yeah, I was sure. working, yeah. and it's like, when is the sub purge gonna, gonna stop? stop? Like, when yeah. are people gonna stop unsubbing? Yeah, maybe never. And on top of that, this past week I changed up the channel. Now I'm covering more than Nintendo, and I'm sure that's pissed some people off because that's just the way it goes. Even though one of my top viewed videos this week is a video about Sony, so I mean, the audience has spoken. We're now a Sony channel. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we are now a Sony Prime. <laughs> so, but but it's just interesting because this is the hundredth episode. This yeah. to me is even more important than the two year anniversary that we celebrate that I celebrated anyways through a live stream a little bit ago. Uh, because technically, Nintendo Prime has been at this for longer than two years. Just as a full time YouTuber, it's been two years. Mm-hmm. But we've been doing this podcast for like three at this point. And somewhere in that area, probably. I yeah. this podcast means something to me. I've talked about it in the past. Um, it was always the piece of content that was going to stick around no matter what happened. If I don't do YouTube full-time, if I'm working 80 hours a week or whatever else, 
Eric and I are going to find a time to get this podcast done. It's just going to happen. Um, and it's because I care. The th- I think the thing I care about the most when it comes to um, the Nintendo community is the discussion on Nintendo games, the discussion on the community of Nintendo fans, and the discussion on Nintendo hardware and the rumors. Like I like discussion a lot. And also, this is a permanent excuse for Eric and I to actually see each other once a week because um, we're busy. Yeah. We're, we're working tons. I got yeah. kids. Like it, it's, it, it's nice to know. Hey, look, every Thursday, we're we're, we're going to meet up. We just know it. It's in our schedule. It's just look. I don't know. He might not get here till eight, but he'll be here in time to do it. Um, unless I push it, or unless he's sick, or you know whatever yeah. happens. Or uh, un, mass un, amounts of snow, yeah, unforeseen <laughs> circumstances yeah. that we that we can't really plan for. So, um, man, this podcast we we've, we've been through a lot of crap. We've I mean. How many guests can you, can you even like? I know we're not gonna be able to count because we're not gonna remember them all. But uh, how many guests can you remember that we've had? Oh, how gosh. many different different ones? I mean, I mentioned a few already. I'll yeah. give you those few already. Well, she says right. player essence. And that's the only time you know for how buddy buddy player essence and I are. He's only ever been on one podcast. Yeah, yeah. Hey, OJ, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> you don't invite me on your podcast. Granted, I think that's a patron thing, but still, yeah. I'm a patron member. I'm just not at the level to be on your podcast. <laughs> um, oh, way to go. Um, and uh, I don't see you uh, knocking on my door to get on my podcast. What's wrong? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, and we had She Says. He's actually been on a couple because um, he was on yeah. one where Darren wasn't around. Yeah. Um, but he he's really busy. So usually when I when I ask him, I have to ask him like a month ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's mm-hmm. hard for me to plan on a month ahead of time. Right. Uh, let me see here. HMK. Mm-hmm. He's been on a couple. A couple early ones. He hasn't been on in a long time. Right. Uh, he was on during that first year. I think he was on one of our hype podcasts in E3. I remember yeah, I really wanted yeah. him on. And then, then we saw him at – no, no, that, that was 2016. Yeah. That we saw him at E3, but we didn't yeah. really know him that well, so we didn't yeah. say anything to him. Right, right, right. When he was going nuts over Zelda. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, out. I remember oh, that. Yeah, I remember out. that. That was that was good. Um, Oh, 5J's been on. 5J, okay. Yeah. Yep. Darren. Yeah. Well, is was Darren Darren really was the OG, guessed? but, I mean, he, well, he he's a guest. You now know he is. He, he was – might as yeah. well have always been. Yeah. Might as well have always been. Yeah. Who else? I can mean, think well, of? you got you got your patrons. Yep. The patrons. So, yep. yep. Let me see. If so, how many of those? How many of those I can name? Yeah. We had two homes on once. Yep. Um, I think Be Righteous was on one. I think so. I think just yep. one. Yep. He might be on one again this month. He tried to get on one last month, but it didn't work out for him. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Corey Bohm has mm-hmm. been on one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew two four three. I yeah, mean, he's the one that's really he's, been. Yeah. He's, he takes advantage every month. He's yeah. on every month. Right. Ever, he's the only twenty dollar back we've had that. Like seriously, he's on every month. Yeah. He actually takes advantage of his of his, of his Patreon stuff. Oh yeah. Every month. And you never actually did mention that part of the Patreon part of it being on the oh, podcast. Oh yeah. For twenty dollars a month, you can be on the podcast. And well, what's also cool too, like over the over the the course of this podcast, is you guys are why we're able to do it every week because it, yeah, yeah. it is hard to organize this. It takes a lot of time to edit. Um, you know, shout out to Martin, our old editor oh, that did this podcast. Yeah. Let me tell you, Martin, after editing this podcast now for a few months, <laughs> I miss not having to waste my weekends editing and rendering videos. Um, it sucks. And I really, really appreciate the amount of time you allowed me to focus on other content. So thank you so much for that. Uh, can't forget that you were a big part of this podcast, oh, yeah. um, for so long. It's just me and Eric now, and then random uh, people from Patreon. And then, uh, I don't know. We haven't had an, an extra guest in so long. It's hard to even say. Yeah. Right. I don't, and I feel bad because it's the hundredth episode. And I, I, I thought about trying to invite everyone who's ever been on to yeah. see how crazy it could get. Yeah. Like, I don't think most people would show up, but even if we got like three of them, like that'd yeah. be huge for us. But yeah. Right. But like the only people I contacted never got back. So I can tell you one right now that you're forgetting someone you met at E3, but I didn't. Oh yes. Mr. Bob Wolf. Bob Wolf from Wolf Dem, yeah, been on, a, been on an episode. Yes, I got. I actually got to ask him again. I've been I've been popping up on his live streams and just checking in on him. I should probably get him on a see. I, basically, uh, tonight, probably tonight, because it has to happen tonight, or I'm gonna forget. I'll, I'll DM some people and and see if they want to be on some episodes coming up. Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was anybody else. I know there's been some more people, but whether or not I can remember who they are. I, I bet you, if you look at your. Uh your things if there's been some people on i bet you there's people screaming me 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 don't forget me 
think so. No? Uh-uh. No, I, I think Gamer Pond just signed up, I think, to be on a podcast this month. So Yep, I think next uh, week. Yeah, I think I think next week. I think for the rest of this month, we I actually we have, have some yep. patrons. Yep. But I'm still going to be inviting on some other guests and seeing it. Hey, you know, it's okay yep. for us to have four people. Yeah, right. We always wanted it to be four yeah, people. Right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I honestly, we've had a lot of great guests. We have. Um, and what I, one thing I like, it's funny, because one thing I like about having guests on is, um, one, a lot of the people I invite, you know, besides patrons, I love the patrons, uh, the people that I invite on like, are usually other YouTubers, and what's great about them is they talk as much as I do. Mm-hmm. So they know how to shut me the hell up. Or if I say something, like, play, like oh, I say something about a GameCube controller and how much I hate it, <laughs> Player Essence has no problem. Yeah. Pop, popping off on me yeah. for it on yeah. my own show. Yeah. On my own show, and I love it. Yeah. I love it. I, lo- I Oh, I love getting them going. I love yeah. it. Dude, yeah. getting OJ going is one of the most entertaining things, <laughs> I swear. Sometimes I want to have mine just so I can say something I know he's going to disagree with. Oh, uh, that like, would be like, funny. Oh, that would sh- be funny. Should I get him on? Because I don't really like fighting games that much. I get him on and tell him how much fighting games suck. <laughs> <laughs> it, why not just bring it bring just, guests on just to torture them just to you know, torture why not? Them. just to torture yeah them. um but yeah there's other people i want to get on to. I, oh oh do you remember this this was early days this was like in the first 10 episodes i think we ever made dreamcast guy oh yeah, yeah. he was on an episode he hasn't been on since yeah. and i actually like have his literal discord and and dms i should He's he's really busy, but I should see if I can get him on an episode too. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I the, I think the hard thing about well, what I've discovered in getting guests on is uh, that because of when we record, mm-hmm. so we record at Thursday nights, which is in the middle Generally. of the week, which is hard for people to get on because they have plans, they have sleep schedules, they have yeah. their own live streams. <laughs> especially YouTubers have their own live streams, their own recordings planned, all the stuff like like OJ does recording, you know, some videos that go into night, and it's like okay, everyone's on a schedule, so. To be on my podcast is out of schedule for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why they're always like, oh, is that on a Friday? Is that on a weekend? It's like, no, it's not. I'm sorry. Because yeah. like, it doesn't work for me. I have kids and I have stuff going on. Yeah. My fiance, who wants to spend time with me on weekends. So um, Thursday night just works out best for both of us for work schedule and everything. And unfortunately, what works best for us doesn't always work best for everybody well, else. Also, not just that it's Thursday night. It's generally Thursday night. 9 o'clock p.m. Well, because after it's when my kids are in bed. Like oh, tonight, right. exactly. would have sucked if we had a guest because they would have been pushed because my son wasn't asleep till like 9.30. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, well, we went to dead all the other stuff we did. Well, There's, right, yeah. I don't know if you guys notice, um, my microphone, uh, if you're watching the video version, it has uh, like a completely different holder compared to his microphone Yeah. Uh, because we snapped off the old holder because we were trying to get uh, one of the uh, fittings out of it. And mm-hmm. we failed because miserably because uh, I needed to get the fitting out to put it on here. And anyways, it snapped. And um, luckily, I have another like thing like this. It's just not made for this microphone. Eh. Whatever, we're gonna live with it until I decide to buy new it, stuff. It works. It it works. Well, I'll find out how well it works in when I go edit this later because I don't know how well it's actually absorbing anything when the metal things are actually touching the mic. Uh, uh, yeah, there's so that. I don't actually know how well the absorption is, but we'll find out. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. I'll get it replaced for next week if I need to. Um, anyways, I digress. Uh, it's been a hell of a ride for a hundred episodes. Mm-hmm. It has. Um, I mean, just even, even our like, placements and our scenery and our everything oh, gosh i mean how many different the, sets have we had uh how many different well, we sets started have we couch had? yeah we first started episode i was on the couch i think we did a couple other episodes on the yep. couch but then we went to the bar yep yep i have a, a bar it's now in the playroom yep. um um we then went to the green screen room hold on but wait in the green screen we, room we had the yes. corner yes we had the corner we had we had the corner the that one went, when that was my only office and my, my yeah. office in my studio. I, like, imagining right now going back to that. Setup. Yeah, I know, right? Like, I'm looking around this like studio right now. Right. All of this. Well, technically, that shelving unit wasn't in here. Mm-hmm. The one behind you. Yeah. Uh, that was in the man cave. Yes. Uh, that's now the playroom. Mm-hmm. But all the stuff that was on it was in there. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. This shelving unit was in there. Yeah. Um, this table the, was in there. Yeah. My desk, the desk with my stuff. The yeah. mini fridge was in there. The yes. microwave was not. That was in the man right. cave. Yep. Um, but like that, that, that was the, like, I'm literally like all the crap I have in here that is still a big mess right now was all in there. I mean, to go from, to go from <sighs> couch to your office that is 
Oh, it's a doubt. It's such a tiny room. Tiny. I don't know how we we always got the camera framed just right. Yeah. To make to not, it look to yeah. make it look like we were semi professional. Yeah. When we were in the dinkiest of yes. spaces with crappy yes, lighting and no space and hot as freaking balls in there. Oh yeah. And, oh man. I mean, if you go look on the YouTube channel, there's some uh, there's some uh, videos out there of us, you know, showing off the the old office and then. And then now going into you know us building the door, having oh. having the idea to even build the door because I know originally our idea was to build a wall. Yeah, yeah. Originally the studio when we expanded it, uh, well we we've been talking about the studio expansion for a while because technically that room right now which we call the green screen room isn't even in use right now. It's storage, random crap. Mm-hmm. I haven't even picked it up. It's it's a mess in there. Yeah, it's not it's not even that bad of a mess. I just got to pack some stuff back in the closet, but. Um, it's just because every now and then when I need something that I, I know is in there, I just dig through crap and I don't pick it up because we're not using the room for anything right now. Right. Um, but that room is going to be the podcast room. It's going to be, well, how, I want to be careful calling it a podcast room. There's a long-term plan for that room mm-hmm. to turn it into an actual stage. Yeah. Um, that's, it's going to be interesting. It won't be green screen anymore. I don't No, It won't be green screen. Cause there's going to be a TV. There's going to be TV and two monitors and some other some other stuff going on, some shelving, whatever. It's something that it's actually it sounds crazy, but it's not going to be like the TV. I'm literally just going to go to a pawn shop. They got a zillion of them. I'll find some 1080p, yeah, 42 inch TV and just yeah. throw it in there. And just well, I'll turn it on at the pawn shop to make sure there's not well, like a, a big jet dead spot on it somewhere. Or like 18,000 dead <laughs> pixels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one. Dead oh, pixel. I do have to Son check the refresh rate. Yeah, uh, I'll bring my, I'll bring my camera with just to yeah. see there's if it's flickering. Yeah, yeah there's on that. the camera. And then um, and then then I just told Eric that like I've been looking at a special kind of desk I want, and I'm like, you know what, might just build one now. To be fair, I got to price things out because I did find one that might be big enough that actually even has an indent to put a TV in it that was 130 bucks. That's now, not terrible. it wouldn't be no. the highest of quality, and I know no. that. You know, I'm yeah. sure. But yeah. but it it's fine. And then we don't have to build it. Mm-hmm. Now, chair-wise, might have to get new chairs. Yeah. Don't know if these chairs will probably be too short. I don't know. And those other chairs we have, my God. <laughs> I don't know if I can go back to those. Yeah. No, if I bring the if I bring the other cloth one down here, yeah, those are fine. Yeah, those would be fine. But uh, right, because that other one upstairs is supposed to be down here anyways. So <laughs> yeah. I I anyways, mean, we'll we'll figure it out once once we get it and 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 do all that stuff. Um, and yeah, and so yeah, that was the set, the corner of the office. Yep. Then when we initially built out the studio, this was not the podcast set. No, it was still the green screen, and you guys probably didn't even notice the difference. Yeah. It was just a different. It just that whole room. We just was went to a green, wall, and it was just we had a bigger wall, with better yeah. lighting, uh, and so it made one, key two, and three, it out four. Even. That's four. So we have four. And and we got that, five that, here now. Yeah, I think this is five, five different sets. Yeah, yeah. That's and nuts. there'll be set number six later this year. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. Even even if I end up not doing this every day anymore, uh, which by the way we're still we're still a daily YouTuber, um, I'm still gonna build that out because it's not that expensive. Mm-hmm. So. Not as expensive as I thought it was gonna be. Obviously, wall paint, all this stuff like might again. I know, <laughs> I know. And the thing is, I don't even know what color I want that set to be yet. Yeah, no, I, I, I was debating. I, I was debating actually if we take it back to white. Yeah. Um. And uh, I know what I want to do, but we're not going to do it. Okay. Okay. But I want to mention it anyways because okay. I think it'd be really cool for the okay. podcast set. Yeah. I want to put up plexiglass plant panels with LED lights behind it, mm-hmm. yeah. so that I can yeah. change the colors of. Yeah. And I got that idea because my parents. Mm-hmm. Now they had a really expensive one; they didn't custom build mm-hmm. it themselves. Mm-hmm. But they had they had they used to have have something like that behind their TV in their in their room, mm. and it looked really cool. And I'm like, gosh, if I just had like a a, a nice you know eight foot section of a wall like that, that'd be sweet. Yeah. Now it's actually not that expensive to do it yourself, but then you know, yeah, you cut the plexiglass. And you got it, you know, and it's got to be obviously plexiglass. It's uh, uh, got a coating on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. I'll have to look at, uh, at how that is. I don't think that's going to happen in this one because then I don't have to worry about the color of the wall so much. Um, I had also thought about just doing this where we make it white and just use flood lamps. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I don't know because then the flood lamps might shine back off the TVs or the monitors and then they might look good. Maybe. Unless I use LED strips around the TVs on the backside. Mm-hmm. Because then I could change those. Right. So, yeah. 
whole lot of ideas. I, yeah. Basically, the wall is the one thing I'm not sold on. There's going to be two monitors, but besides that, I don't know what else is going on on the wall. Yeah. So, oh, I know. Wait, I know for sure that some of those shelves are going to go up because we're going to put different items per podcast or per right. show. Right. Yeah. Up. So I know that was one thing, but um. Yeah. Got I don't know. It's going to be crazy when we finally get to it. Basically, I need like 300 bucks to make it all all done. Yeah. So I already yeah. have the monitors. I don't have to worry about the monitors. So yeah. I mean, and I have the computer. Thank yeah. you so oh, yeah. much. Uh, I think it was two homes actually sent me the extra computer that I use for editing. I'm, that's because of that computer. I can actually do that setup in there because it's going to oh, yeah. be a, a dedicated yeah. storage server and literally dedicated to everything that has to do with that set. Yeah, and that set, by the way, can be used for multiple shows. That's the idea of the different of the monitors and the TVs and changing out items and stuff and maybe changing the colors. Is there'll be the Nintendo Prime podcast stuff, and then there'll be other shows I can do in there in the future. Um, as an example. I want to do a live news show eventually, um, and that would be from that set. And then this set here wouldn't be the table anymore, um, unless I'm doing unboxings. Like, this table will probably be set off to the side and just be brought out for unboxings. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this will just be the discussion area. You guys remember when I used to stand for videos um, and, and stuff like <laughs> What? Well, I do for, for, yeah, for, I, I for, for news videos. I know. My news videos now have a new setup, but for, for discussion videos, I want to do it back here. I don't want to do a lot, a lot of videos anymore sitting in my chair. Um, one, it's lazy. Two, I sit in my chair enough as is. I eat you know right now. Chair stream? Um, chair Come stream. On. The, the chair stream is not, that's a live stream stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even some of my live streams, I've been using the, the portable green screen and yeah. it actually looked really, really good. Um, so I don't know. Things are changing around here, but yeah, hundred I mean, episodes in. Also, and, and but what I'm what I'm basically saying is we're hundred episodes in and I'm not satisfied. Right. We're gonna keep getting better. But also, you do have to re really re mention these right here oh the mics oh yeah i mean be righteous yeah be righteous yeah got us these mics um because we were having issues with the cheapos <laughs> yeah the cheapo studio professional studio mics that we had they were l cheapos like 30 dollar mics and god they sucked yeah um it was a fight like we think we fight with the audio now i think us, oh god we it both was forget. way worse i mean we would spend oh yeah hours upon hours to get one to work yeah that we did um and we switched to those because the blue yeti was having issues going in and out and it wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't the greatest of quality all the time um right. and blue yetis are great especially if you're just a solo person or if it's like an interview uh now i have lab mics so technically if crap hits the fan i could try to switch over to lab mics <laughs> lab mics are going to be difficult for live stream purposes though yeah because i can't really run them through my mixer very well right but we can run them into our phones and get high quality recordings that way so it, in that case it might not be a live stream we had to use the lab mics but right whatever we don't have to use it because yeah. we have these amazing microphones we do and i somehow had enough extra audio equipment to hodgepodge together another setup hey. after breaking the old hey, one so you know hey it made it, they it made it how many episodes without breaking i'm kind of surprised with how Oh, well, and it would have kept going if yeah. we didn't get something jammed in it. Yeah. And then we tried it, drilling yeah. it out, and yeah. it was yeah. it was a pain in the butt. Yeah. But whatever. You know what? 100 episodes in, we're still here. Yeah, that we are. So uh, I guess time for the next topic? Yeah, yeah. So the next topic, uh, man, I think I almost forgot what it is off the top of my head. Okay. I, I got it. What was the next topic? You know what, Eric? What? I'll, I'll, i I got to provide the details for it. I know that. Oh, yeah. Um. So... Did a video on this, and, and it was in Prime News, but I want to have a discussion on it. So Google, so we, they basically discovered or has been discovered on Google Chrome's development website where they put up notes and everything the developers do. It's public because Google Chrome is a public browser. Um, that Nintendo Switch Pro Controller support and Joy-Con support, both individual Joy-Cons left and right, um, Joy-Cons together wirelessly, obviously, Joy-Cons in the Joy-Con grip with a USB cable uh, That for, if you have the charging grip. Um, same for the Pro Controllers, Bluetooth, or, or USB. Uh, support is coming to Chrome. Now, it might sound confusing to you at first, but Project Stream runs through Chrome. Mm. So that's basically what it's for. It's not for like browsing the internet. <laughs> hey, it's for Project Stream. I mean, Project I guess Stream. it works. I mean, if, it's you, for Project if, you can, Stream. if you can use your joystick and A so, button to move your mouse and click, I mean, why not? Um, Project Stream is a game streaming service. Uh, they had a beta test for it last year with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, thanks to one of our uh, people on Discord, I was invited to participate in that. I actually did a live stream of it to kind of show you guys a proof of concept of how well game streaming is right now, and it was really damn good. Now, <laughs> granted, I have a business line internet, so I don't expect it to be bad here, but it was really nice. It, it was a very nice and smooth experience, and it was kind of cool because not only did I stream it to myself, I streamed it back out to you guys, and it was 
flawless. And I tried it on multiple devices. I even tried it on really crappy internet and didn't have a problem with my laptop. So I don't know. It, it, it seemed really cool, really nice, really interesting. And they're adding this Switch and Pro Controller support to it, um, which is nice. It means like if you're playing on PC or Xbox or wherever you have a Chrome browser on your phone, uh, you could enjoy Project Stream or whatever they end up calling it when they launch it. Now, Google is doing a GDC special on the 19th. Uh, so I'll be live streaming that and uh, we'll see if they even talk about the switch or pro controller support or whatever. Um, cause they're, they, they're saying they're going to talk about their plans for the future of gaming, which obviously is going to include their, their, uh, project stream, whatever that, mm -hmm. whatever they're doing with that. And then there's rumors out there that they might be launching an actual hardware console. So that's going to be interesting. That'd be, to, that'd be interesting to see what Google is doing there, but I have a theory. Okay. Okay. So, Wow, oh, I think I'm so Joy Cons. I'm just going to come out and say it. Joy Cons to me are inferior controllers to everything else. Even the GameCube controller. Yes, <laughs> I'll give, even give the GameCube. And I'm not saying this like because you guys have to have an issue with the Joy Con controllers. And I think someone in the comments on one of the videos said, "Oh, my preferred way to play is the Joy Con sideways." You might be the only person in the world that prefers that. I'm not saying it's a bad experience. No. But it's not as good as just a, a normal controller in your hands. Like, yeah. uh, gosh, I got my Donkey Kong one here. Like, this feels, like, at least decent. The Joy-Cons feel tiny, crampy. Yeah, the, the buttons are located, like, the B button's yeah. directly above the stick. Yeah. That bothers some people. There's no D-pad unless you get the right. unless you modify it or you get the Hori one. So, like, it's not a, a, just a good experience. And... To me, there's no reason to really support the Joy-Cons because I don't see how anyone would even think about using Bluetooth Joy-Cons, even especially sideways, yeah, right. with Project Stream. I don't, right. I don't see that as even a thing I, that anyone using that service would, would think of. The Pro Controller, right. sure, yeah. it's a standard controller. But here's yeah, the, the thing. The Joy-Con grip, it's not terrible. It's a little Yeah, yeah. Little the Joy-Con grip with it's okay, but still, even the sticks, me, they don't have me, as much it's, travel. It's, it's still... Uh, also, a little bit too close. I well, just wished it would have been a little bit. Like, I, th I wish they would have, um, when you put them on there, because they're going straight, there are like fan-made ones where they're kind of like bowed out a little bit mm -hmm. like this, and then that fe actually feels kind of nice. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you have to recalibrate your sticks when you do that because now your sticks are facing a different way, but that's fine. Who cares? People will do that yeah. for a more comfortable grip. But right. um, I think what's interesting to me about this is Joy-Con support to me, this is sounding like Project Stream will be on Switch. Yeah. Yeah. So my question to you is, or, do you even want game streaming services on Switch? Or there's even the possibility of testing for Nintendo possibly thinking in the future of going to game streaming. Testing for what? How it works with game streams. They like the controllers well, and stuff. Well, it should work the same as any it other should. Bluetooth controller. It should. That doesn't necessarily mean it will. But... It, you know, it, it could be just, you know. Because you can already use Joy-Cons with a computer. Like, it's not, like, new. Been able to do that for a while. It's just normal Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, Steam so, doesn't support it very well, though. Steam, the button mapping doesn't really like the Joy-Cons for some reason. <laughs> it's fine with the Pro Control. Just not yeah. the jo I don't know why it doesn't huh. like the Joy-Cons. Um, maybe because it's split and that just confuses Steam. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I, I mean... I'm okay with it because the more games on Switch, the better. So, well, what do you think these services will be used for? Like, what games are we going to get? God, I don't know. You know that yeah. we don't already get. Right. That is there is that. Um, I mean, one is to me the obvious one is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Like, mm -hmm. technically, Switch has it in Japan mm -hmm. through a streaming service that ah. we don't have here. Yeah, there's that. I so, do you think maybe like a Madden or something would? Go on to a streaming service or a, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they're more apt EA to go would on be the, on its own service. I, well, <laughs> there is that. And, there be is micro, that. and then it'll be, and then they'll never let but, you, they'll never let you subscribe per month. You'll, oh, yeah. you'll, you'll be paying because I, you say that because, you know, they have EA access already, which does let you subscribe per month. Sure. That's great and everything. But when they have to do an actual streaming service, guarantee you EA is going to be like, Hey, look, it'll be 10 bucks for three hours. No, 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 no. What they'll do is the loot box it? Loot box it. So you you have well, a, a so random you, chance of paying nothing for a month, 
20 yeah. bucks for a month or, or, or five bucks a, for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the loot box it. Oh, only EA. Only EA. Oh my gosh. They totally would. They totally would. And of course, the chance to get a free one's like point zero zero zero. Oh, well, yeah. Like, obviously. It, like it's, it's, it's a one in a trillion chance to get a free one. No, I mean, maybe a little bit better than that. Just, 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 just to give you hope. Because you got to have at least one person get a free one every once in a while. I don't think they're even going to do it. The, I, I think it would just be at least a penny. Oh, oh yeah. they got to make some money. Yeah, they ain't well, giving you right. anything for yeah, free. That's that. oh, I, you're right. I'm sorry. It's EA. Yeah. They ain't giving you a squad for they free. They don't even let you have demos for free anymore. you got to be part of EA Access for demos. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. So I should but, say that okay. sometimes they have public tests. I think they had a public test for Anthem, but then it's invite only, so like it's not right. a public demo. Like, right? There's no public demos anymore. It's all right. you have to be part of. So you already have to pay for the privilege uh, to enjoy demos. But so back to my original point: yeah. if it, if for some odd reason maybe like EA would trust the streaming. Well, there's more. also the rumor out there that Project uh, the X Stream. From uh, Xbox, mm-hmm. Microsoft, that that mm-hmm. might be coming to Switch, if not this year, early next year. Because okay. I think this yep. year Microsoft's going to focus on their platforms. Yep. But then next year, yeah. when they're going to expand it, uh, that Switch might be one of those platforms. So mm-hmm. like, Switch might have multiple options. Right. Um. And, and you I know, mean, if I, if EA can get along with one of them, I mean, I focus on Madden because well, and I, Ubisoft, Ubi, like Ubisoft, like, like we can't ignore them. Right. They, they they're the ones that already are streaming. Odyssey on Switch it, in Japan. So, it, like, Ubisoft's clearly going to be for game streaming. Maybe it will help pull a little bit more AAA su- kind of quote-unquote support because sure. not, but not well, really. Well, like, The Division 2 is not on Switch right now, even though it runs on an engine that runs on Switch. I don't know why it's not here, but right. uh, it looks pretty. And, I mean, that could be something that, that would be on the service. Future Assassin's Creed games, obviously, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what some people are afraid of is that... No, like I think everyone can kind of get behind. Okay, an option to get games we weren't going to get anyways. Fine, but like, is it I, also going to be an option that's going to replace games we were going to get anyways? Right. Example: There's Doom, Doom Eternal is coming to Switch. Yep. But if that's available through a streaming service, would that mean that like the next Doom game wouldn't come to Switch? They would just put it on the streaming service. Maybe. And I, I think people I don't, don't want that right. because then what happens is you don't own the game anymore. Right. So when the server shut off, right, you can't play. Right. There's also the quote unquote, you know, this how much is this leading into the future of gaming where all of a sudden we lose we're losing physical copies of the game. Mm-hmm. Period. I mean we all of a sudden everything's now going to streaming. You don't own games, period. You yeah. don't have physical copies of anything. I mean, there's some people. Yeah, that that, that is a, like that. that is a future. I actually saw a thread on reset era. Where someone mentioned, so we know, uh, like, uh, before we even get all the details on the streaming stuff, um, it, the title of the thread was essentially, so we all know that the way we enjoy games now is going to go the way of the dinosaur someday, mm-hmm. right? Like, like yeah. it, it's blatantly obvious that, like, physical games is probably maybe not go extinct because it's not extinct on PC yet. But it's going to go the way of PC, where PC mm-hmm. basically you don't even have disc drives. So like, yeah, yeah, no, right. You could buy some physical games, but it's more of a novelty item. Like it's kind of like buying records. They don't release records of every album anymore. Like, yeah, like it's a novelty item. Right. Uh, it's not uh, standard. And well, I mean, heck, now it, even CDs are almost going that way. Whether or not it re- now digital games, I think are going to last a lot longer. Oh yeah. I don't know yeah. that they're going to get rid of full like purchasing a game and downloading it. I don't know that that's going to go away for a while. I think that delivery method is one that uh, is going to exist because even even with all the Netflix and all that stuff going on, you can still purchase digital. Co- like I I own I own some movies on Amazon, mm-hmm. just straight up bought the movie on Amazon, so I can play it anywhere. Uh, still uses internet, but I own it, you know. And as long as Amazon exists, which I don't see Amazon going away anytime soon, I will have access to it. Right. So and that's why I bought but, it through Amazon that, because they're. But that's also another thing around. though too, though, is that you know you're relying on somebody else being around. Well, it, that's, there, that's to, be fair, to be fair, to be fair, I have an option on Amazon to download it and just keep it. Okay. So, okay. So there's at least that. Yeah, yes. So, so if we ever heard of, you know, Amazon. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'll just, go download, crashing, I'll just go download just, whatever I got. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, or going bankrupt or whatever. Right. Exactly. I don't, I mean, like you said, I don't foresee that yeah. happening. Well, I mean, even Netflix but, now lets you download some things. Yeah. Um, but, I'm guessing probably their, their shows. 
I, I don't know. I think you're actually able to download anything you want. But obviously, um, there's DRM involved because they're going to have to – they won't – the idea is so if you're on the road, you don't have to eat up all your data, mm-hmm. right? So, like, you can still watch your shows in the car or on the mm-hmm. bus but not eat up all your data. But obviously, they have to do some sort of online check or back something. To, yeah, back at, to at least once so. a day or once a week. They figure I don't I've never tried it. So I'm assuming yeah. cuz the idea is to be able to play it offline, but obviously they have to do a check to make sure you're subscribed at some point. Or, or not even not even that, but is the thing still on Netflix? Because I don't well, know if that, you know if, they, if you too. download it I wonder, and then all of a sudden I wonder if that's a way to keep things when they take I don't it on know. Netflix. Would I don't that be know. crazy? That would be interesting. Gosh, I should have downloaded all the episodes of the house back in the day yeah, when right? they had it on Netflix. Yeah, right. They didn't, I don't even think they had that feature back yeah. then, but but yeah, I don't know. It's it Here's the thing. It's a future that's coming anyways. Right. Okay. Whether we want it to come or not, game streaming is coming. It's Google's pushing it. Microsoft's going to be pushing it. Amazon is, is rumored to be working on something for it. Uh, we've already seen streaming services or streaming uh, applications on Switch appear in Japan. It's coming. It's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. There's nothing we can do to stop it from coming besides tell a bunch of consumers that wouldn't otherwise be playing games that they shouldn't spend their money on these services that are really cheap or at least probably going to be really cheap at first. To play a bunch of AAA games on their phones. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean. Project Stream and X and X Stream work on phones or X Cloud or whatever they're calling it. Work on phones, so you're not going to be able to tell those billions of phone users, no, don't spend this cheap, you know, relatively Netflix style money per month to play AAA games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, you're right. not going to be able sure. to tell them For not sure. to do that. So it's not going to go away. So I. I like having the services on Switch because I think it does mean we're going to get some games that we normally wouldn't get, especially if they're single player. Single player, I think, mm-hmm. is where streaming really, really can live and really thrive. Um, so mm-hmm. the Assassin's Creeds of the world, mm-hmm. um, Resident Evils, stuff like that can really thrive in a streaming, the streaming service. The multiplayer games, I think, are going to take a while. Like Call of Duty, um, because there is going to be latency. I didn't notice it too bad in Assassin's Creed, but it, it is something you would notice in a Twitch online shooter. You know, when mm-hmm. you're when you're playing Call of Duty online, you're gonna notice latency versus someone who's not streaming it. Uh, so, I think it might take a while for for. I mean, it might even take till everyone has fiber before we we get multiplayer games like streaming. I'm sure um, Microsoft will have their games on it because I think they said all their games might be on XCloud in the future. So, like next Halo and stuff will be on yeah. there. But again, just because it's on there doesn't mean it's or, gonna be good. Or it's gonna be the non extremely labor intensive multiplayer games i don't know like what so wait like, like, i don't know killer I, queen black yeah yeah Lovely. um no just you know something that's simple that doesn't take Overcooked. a whole lot of yeah it doesn't take a whole lot of updating back and a whole lot of data back and forth um even so. then there's still the the issue i don't think is the amount of data it's the latency already from you sending a command to a server Mm-hmm. Okay, there's already that latency, and now you're waiting for commands from other people to the same server, and then waiting for those commands to come back to you for you to send more commands out. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the World of Warcraft problem, right? Where in MMOs, um, everything might look fine and smooth on your end, but on someone else's end, you might be firing off spells at different times than you think you are, and they might be firing off spells at different times than you, than you think they are. Mm-hmm. So, like, it tries its best to sync everything, but bottom line is, with all those different internet connections coming in. Mm-hmm nothing's ever exactly perfect. Oh, so what you're saying is, is if you're down to, what, three frames a second that, you know... <laughs> I you... probably should not have been in a hardcore raiding guild, let alone be one of the best healing priests on the server, running at three to five frames per second <laughs> World of Warcraft in 40-man raids. No, that should not have probably existed. But back then, no, I think everyone was running at crappy frames. Oh, or had crappy internet, so it didn't there really matter. That. So no one noticed that I was running at three to five. <laughs> one, I got really good, though. I got so good at... T- like, here's the thing. Like, when the game is running, like, when you're seeing individual frames... Yeah. Okay? You know how easy it is to time and count out your spells? Oh, yeah. Like, okay, so you had to memorize how long does it take to cast your spell and what's the cooldown. Yeah. So you're not looking at the frames. You're yeah. just subconsciously, I hit the key, yep. now I can hit it again. Yeah. And now I can hit it again. Oh, okay. And then when I went to ones where you would click on the on the name tags to do the healing, click different buttons on the name tags, it got even easier because now, you know, every second, once per second, <laughs> the health bars would update. <laughs> But you could only fire off a heal every 1.5 seconds, anyways. Yeah, so, so it worked. Like, yeah. So yeah. and it, when you weren't sure at all, you would just spam prayer of healing nonstop. Yeah, because it hits a whole group of five. There you go. 
So either way, you're healing someone, and then you look really good on the healing charts, even if you didn't do your job of healing the tank. <laughs> because yep. you, his health bar jumped, and for some reason it didn't update for two seconds, and now he's dead. Oops. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, those So, I mean, days. yeah, I think it's the more games we can get on it, the better. Yeah. So... So I think it's ultimately a good thing now, but it's one of those, over time, I think the concerns that people have are going to start cropping up when mm-hmm. we start seeing games come out that we at least feel as consumers could be running on Switch. Mm-hmm. I think at first, like, oh, if, if Assassin's Creed Odyssey or the next Assassin's Creed or Division 2 or Call of Duty or whatever, like some some more intensive games, uh, Red, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2, like if all those start coming to Switch, we're going to be like, okay, cool, those games weren't coming to Switch anyways. But it, it's like, okay, Who's gonna like? Oh, what about Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle Two? Yeah, is that suddenly streaming only? Yeah, that would not be. Or fun. when's a Nintendo game gonna go streaming only? Right, when Nintendo decides it wants to have its own streaming service, and when they realize they can make more money that way, probably. Yeah. So it, it's yeah, it, it's interesting. And on top of that, you know, there's always the concern that you pay a subscription fee. And there's probably going to be microtransactions in a lot of those games, which exist already. Like, you, you pay a subscription to play World of Warcraft, there's optional microtransactions where you can buy mounts and stuff. Granted, they don't really give you an advantage in the game. It's all cosmetics. So right. it doesn't bother me too much in World right. of Warcraft. But um, you know an EA would be like, okay, subscription service, microtransactions, and loot boxes. It's right. all happening at once. Right. So now we have a continuous stream of revenue in every game we make in three different ways. <laughs> So instead of, instead of just paying the $60 price, buying the DLC and the microtransactions, and on top of that, you know, loot boxes, now it'll be, okay, you don't buy the game anymore. You just pay us a perpetual fee to play it every month. Yep. That just forever and ever and ever. Uh, on or top until of, we feel like uh, On it top of that, oh, if you want the DLC, that'll be sold separately in packs. Oh, <laughs> and the microtransactions and the loot boxes. I mean, there's a world, like, EA is going to be the company to do it. They're going to do it. Oh, yeah. They are going to do it. They oh. Just wait till they start piecemealing. Oh. Wait, wait till they piecemeal. What, they'll be like, okay, you want to play Madden online? That's $5 a month. You want to play franchise mode? That's $15 oh, a month. You're right. No. Oh, you you, ex- you want to do Madden Ultimate Team? You pay for the privilege, 30 bucks a month. To for buy the privilege, packs of- no, no, For the privilege to be able to then spend money on packs. Oh, yeah, obviously. Duh. No, I I really, that's, you know, you said something, and then I was like, oh, my God, I can see them doing that. You know, you have your base stream where they have you know your your games then they have an upgraded section where you get the dlc for those games <laughs> and then you have, a month yeah then you have then you have like another tier where you get the special editions of of games it's kind of like when anthem came out and it had 18 different release dates the release date of of the game will be based on which tier you're in right so you want to give us 60 bucks a month sure We'll we'll give you a, what a week's well, we'll early access. We'll give you an extra. We'll give you an extra twelve hour early. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we could. What am I thinking? <laughs> sorry. Yes, twelve hours. Oh man. And then, and the next one's like ten hours, and then eight hours. See then, me. I what, what I want. I don't mind the streaming services being there, but I also kind of want a Game Pass on Switch. So Game Pass on Xbox. You download the games. You pay you pay a fee per month, like ten bucks a month or something like that. Yeah, it's in addition to Xbox Live. Whatever. Point is, you pay ten bucks a month, hundred twenty dollars a year. And you can get all the all the Xbox exclusive games, and plus they add other things. They have they have the older gen games and stuff. It's like their virtual console too, and you download them and play. Mm-hmm. Them. I think that's cool. I think like having a future where you can do both of that, that's fine to me. Mm-hmm. Granted, I don't want physical games to go away. Right. But if they were going to go away, but that was the future, I'm a little bit okay with that. Granted, you still don't have ownership, so you still I think should offer the option to buy games digitally. I, actually, you know what? Here's the way I, I view it. If you if you have a, a thing on Game Pass, like on Switch. It should be, if you've been a member of Game Pass for a year, any of the games you have downloaded and actually played in that past year, um, yeah, you can keep playing them by, by staying a member of Game Pass, or you will be given an option after a year, you know, every year, for whatever you played for the last year, to purchase the games you already have downloaded for a discounted amount. Whatever that discount is, 50%. For Nintendo games, 50% off would be huge, <laughs> since their games they never would, go down they in price. Do that. You're right, it'd be like five bucks off oh, yeah. they, they game stop it yeah they game stop it but yeah. the point is like some sort of discount nintendo's even talked about doing this before a customer loyalty program yeah uh, so true a lot of used to talk about it like rewarding people for buying nintendo games or buying nintendo yeah. services still doesn't exist i mean you could argue oh you know the the gold coin system you know when you buy digital games physical games and like you register them and you get like gold coins like oh that's a discount program 
that didn't really feel like what he was talking about. Right. He was talking about if you keep buying Nintendo games, they eventually get cheaper for you for being loyal. Right. And not cheaper for you because we're giving you gold coins that you can optionally spend to get it cheaper on the eShop. Right. They were talking about like, you know, okay, you bought Odyssey, Zelda, Splatoon, and ARMS. Okay, well, Xenoblade Chronicles is half off kind of thing right. for you. Like, that's what it felt like he was talking about. Mm-hmm. But you never got to see that vision through, of course, because unfortunately, untimely passing of him. Um, and I don't know that he would have ever got that to come. Maybe, maybe he was just referencing for gold coins, and this maybe. was the plan all along. But, maybe. Um, I don't know. I just think it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, should we move on to our next topic? We can. Oh, boy, guys. Are you ready for the giveaway? Uh, so here's what's happening. We're going to be um, debating and trying to come to a semi-definitive conclusion on what are the top five exclusive Nintendo Switch games so far. Okay. We're going to try very, very hard. You guys can submit your own list if you want down in the comments. There's no hate here. Everyone's going to like what they like. But remember, we said exclusive. Sucks for me because my favorite game of all time gets knocked off. Breath of the Wild isn't exclusive, so it doesn't count. Yep. Um, That's a key thing. So, like, even Starlink I would want to throw on there. Can't. Yep. It's not exclusive. Even though it has exclusive (laughs) content, it's not an exclusive game. And so that basically knocks out two-thirds of my games that I've played. Um. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so we're going to have a little debate. And then um, if you want, you could actually go do it right now. Uh, we are actually going to be giving away five Nintendo Switch games. It will be a Switch game of your choice. Uh, you must, unfortunately, this time around be in the United States. Um, this could potentially be a really expensive giveaway for us because people could choose $60 games uh, and or they could choose cheaper games. It could be a digital or physical copy, your choice. Uh, and that's why we're keeping it strictly to the U.S. because I feel like a lot yeah. of people, when they win, will yeah. want... Um, the physical copy. So mm-hmm. we're just going to have it shipped to you from Amazon. Um, the standard version only. Yep, standard version only. No limited editions. Uh, it's just one because those are more expensive usually. And two, sometimes they're really hard to get their hands on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, so it could be it could be any physical Switch or uh, physical Switch game or digital Switch game. That's 60 bucks or less. Um, and we're picking five winners to yep. represent each of the five games. We originally were going to do like, oh, let's give away a copy of our top five, but then it's like, yeah, but a lot of people might have some of the games. Mm-hmm. So it's like, let's just make it fair, and you can pick any game you want. So there will be five winners. Uh, the giveaway will be ending uh, next week, Thursday. Yep, uh, each winner or, gets- or I should say, if you're listening on Monday, it'll be this week, Thursday, and then uh, we'll talk about the winners or announce the winners during the podcast. So be yep. sure to tune into that podcast. Multiple ways to enter, by the way. Um, and you'll see that when you go to the Gleam.io link down in the description. So Yeah, uh, each winner will get one game. Yep, yep. One game per winner, five winners. Yes. So, uh, and what, what's interesting is this is actually the first giveaway I've ever done that Eric's actually helping with it. Mm-hmm. So uh, we pulled our money together to pull this off. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in for 100 yeah, episodes. Right. And not only the 100, like, thank you all our patrons for making this even possible. I mean, God, we're at $462 on Patreon. Like, this is right. just blowing right. my mind that we, like, we're, we might be at 500 bucks next month. Like, mm-hmm. what? I don't know what I did to deserve that support, but thank you guys. And I'm actually curious. I know I brought this up to you in before the podcast, um, but I'm actually curious as to, you know, we say this is our 100th episode. I'm actually curious as to where some of these audience members Came actually from? started picking us up at. What episode? Leave, down in the comments, leave what episode you started watching us out at. If it's today, welcome. If you've been with us since day one, thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm just kind of curious to see how, you know, what's, what's the mixture of longevity, you know, brand new, what, what's kind of, why not add like why you like watching the podcast? There's that too. Uh, and maybe what your favorite episode was, if you happen to remember. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, just kind of, just it's just feedback. Yeah. Just feedback, feedback that helps us, um, just kind of figure out, you know, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. And how we can grow the podcast to be even bigger than it already is. So, um, all right. So, top five. Top five. So, I think we can just get a couple out of the way that I think we're going to agree on. Super Mario Odyssey. Yes. Like, I, I think we'll just agree on that period. Um, who, after that, though, is there any guarantees? Uh, I think for the two of us, it's, I don't, well, for me, um, probably Pokemon Let's Go. Whether it's. Uh, I mean, you have Although the, he the, I he have the Pokemon. Pikachu. He has the Pikachu one. I have Pikachu. Okay. I d- were you just going to say I have the Pokemon one? Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think I did say it, actually. <laughs> um, I, I think another one for us would probably be Smash Ultimate that we could possibly agree with one, maybe? I don't know. I mean, that's I, I mean that's in my top five only because I've only played 
No, you played games. more than five. We went through it. I know. We've, I've you, only played a handful of games, though. You played so, more than a handful because a handful's five. You know what I mean. Um... So, so I mean, the, those so are the one, three, the, those are at least so, three of my so, top five. So, so Pokemon Smash and uh, Mario Odyssey is mm-hmm. what you got. See, for me, I would argue obviously Odyssey is in there. Uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Kingdom Battle. Yes, that is uh, definitely that is that's, already that's, that's, in my, that's in like my top two favorite Switch games. There are uh, after that, it gets a little fishy for me. Um, Octopath Traveler. I haven't finished it yet, but everything I've played of it tells me that should be in my top five. Um, and then uh, it gets so debatable after that uh, because I, I love Pokemon. Smash Smash Ultimate, I think, is amazing, but I'm just not a fighting game fan. So, like, there's games I enjoy more than Smash, mm-hmm. and I know that. So part of me wants to put it in my top five because I think it would be top five, if not number one, for almost every one of our viewers or every Switch owner out there. But for me, it's like, but that's mm-hmm. not the kind of games I enjoy the right. most. No, I get you. So, I like, Splatoon you. 2 to me is a better game for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I played it. I have it. Surprisingly, um, I haven't, I haven't played. It. No, I mean I got it. I think almost pretty close to right away when we when nice. it came out. Nice, because um, I know we were playing. We were we, we played it a couple times. Sure, but I haven't touched it in since almost since I bought it. Okay, um, yeah. So there's that. Yeah, Odyssey, I mean, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um, it's it's fun. Autopath, Splatoon Two. I'm just gonna throw Splatoon Two in there. I really like Splatoon Two a lot. Um, and then my fifth one, that fifth one's tough. Uh, you know, I haven't played enough of Xenoblade Chronicles to put it in there. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors is nice, but I like Hyrule Warriors better. And I know Hyrule Warriors isn't exclusive on Switch, but yeah, it's like I know it's better. So I, I, I just I can't really put Fire Emblem on there. <laughs> um, at least maybe Fire Emblem Three Houses when that comes out. Maybe Yoshi's not out yet, so that yep. can't that can't be considered Kirby another Star? demo. Kirby Star Allies is, is not in my top five. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a better game, it's a better game than people give it credit for, but it's not right. Not, no, not I, a top I, five. I'm throwing out games. I mean, Arms was pretty good, but again, I'm not really big into fighting games, so I don't. I'm not gonna say I'd put Arms above Smash. So that that wouldn't that wouldn't be the case for me. Pokemon obviously is always in consideration because the Pokemon game that was good one. enough for me to play the next one, which yeah, I, I mean, didn't think was gonna happen. So it brought me back. At yeah. least for the let's the, go part of it. Yeah, it, it brought me back. So now I'll, I'll give the next gen a shot. I don't know if it brought me back that far. You don't know if you're gonna play next gen. Maybe. I, I mean, I, I think I think for, I might give it a shot. Yeah, I, I think for the sake of us fully rounding out everything we think about Pokemon, we have to give that next one a shot. That's true. Because this was Let's Go, which was a Gen 1 remake right up our alley. <laughs> so it's like okay, there, there let's actually that. give the next give one, one a fair shot. I will let's give you that. Beat one. it. At least beat the story, okay. and just be like, okay, okay. Do we like it or do we not? And now, now that we've actually gone through mm-hmm. it, can we explain better why we might not like Pokemon mm-hmm. anymore, mm-hmm. or were we just wrong and living on presumptions? And it's just been a long time, and we love it. It's don't possible. Know. We don't That's know. Possible. That's why I think we really need to dive in because well, Let's Go was great and fantastic, and I loved it. It's still like, but it was Gen One, which is right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, and Gen- I don't think that's a fair way for me to judge Gen One remade actually to in my idea actually be a slightly better <laughs> that's a hot hey, take only oh, there's a hot only, take there's a hot take. only because of the nostalgia gone no not not no <laughs> no <laughs> no no. Not gone. no no it's still there only because i really 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 like the uh live world pokemon okay yeah, that is that is so cool. I'm I'm kind of disappointed that doesn't appear to be. That is the only Jenny. reason why I think it is oh, it's, slightly it, that, better than the actual original. See, I actually like the capture mechanics in Let's Go. So, well, but yeah, yeah I mean, the, right, the Pokemon right. in the Overworld is huge. I think yeah. it. Oh, I wish they. I don't know. Maybe it will be there in Jenny, but it didn't look. It like didn't. It, 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 it looked look like Wild Encounters. Right. Correct. Um, random, it's gonna yeah. feel weird going back to random yeah. encounters. Uh. I mean, golf story. Yeah, that that oh, that good. one is good. It's that one is so good. good. Yeah, I still have to get. But I'm like, too. Ah, it's a better than Smash. I'm like, ah, for me, it probably yes. It probably I put I put more hours into it for a reason. Like, yeah. it's probably for me better than Smash. Um, but is that top five? No, I'm debating on uh, that. Might that might round out my top five with that one. Golf story. Golf story. Okay, so your top five is what again? Uh, Smash Pokemon. Odyssey, 
Golf Story and oh lord, Mario plus Rabbids. Yes. Yeah, you were you oh, freaked yeah. out when you saw that. Game. Oh god, yeah, it's so good. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Um, have you have you beat the Halloween area yet? Uh, you gotta remember where I'm at. I'm, I'm I think I'm in that you area. Can, or not. You would not forget if you beat the Halloween. Yeah, actually, area. yes, I think I did. Okay, I, so you I got did. the yes. opera song. Yes, I did. Oh, I did. Yes. Oh, that was the best yes. part of the whole game. Yes. Oh, it was so good. Yes, I, right. yes. I go back I to replay that, yeah. that area sometimes yeah. just for that. It's yeah. such a good fight. Yeah, I it love took it. me forever. Oh. It, it kind of took me forever to figure out that how one, to. That one was the closest thing in gaming to getting me back to Conquer's Bed for a day. Oh yeah, well, with, with the, with the great, great Mighty, Mighty Pooh. Poo. It was the oh, closest yeah. thing in gaming yeah. I've had in thirty years to get yeah. me back to that. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. It was so good, and it was so funny. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just ripping on Mario. I'm oh, like, yeah. what is happening? Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this, this is old school rare comedy oh, for sure. right here. For this sure. is awesome. For sure. Oh, I loved it. That fight alone put the game in my top five, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, man. Plus, the game itself is just really good. DLC yeah. is really good, too. I don't know if you've played the DLC yet. But no, the, I have not. Dude, the Donkey I know. Kong I still DLC ha- I still so have to good. actually get beat that game. so good. Oh, man. Um, I just haven't had time. I've been out of out of out of town for work. And Snipper clips. That's another yeah. one. Yeah. You know what's also exclusive Actually, right yeah. now on Switch? Tetris ninety nine. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. I, I'm not a big fan of the, Tetris. The, so the entire Nintendo Switch online service. I'm yeah. I, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a big fan. Do of we Tetris, disqualify? So do yeah. we disqualify Splatoon because it requires the online service? Oh God. No. <laughs> yeah, there might be that. Oh man. Ah. Oh. There's a lot. There's a lot more exclusive games than than people I think realize. I think there's like mm-hmm. 16 of them when I last I counted it up. So you know we're picking a third of them. I mean, Golf Story probably would round out my top five. I really like Golf Story. To me, it's everything that Mario Golf should have always been, but never fully progressed to. Because mm-hmm. Mario Golf was an RPG, but it never really was that open world like full progression. Into mm-hmm. it. It, it, it was it was an interesting take, and I liked how they did it, but they never mm-hmm. built upon that concept. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this feels like okay. This feels like the, the the group that made this out of Australia looked at clearly Mario Golf and they're like, right? What is the next step for Mario Golf? We're doing it. Yeah, I mean, and heck, it's got frothing in it. It's got. <laughs> I mean, heck, it's got frothing. Frothing in it for granted. Yeah. I love froth. They, yeah. they brought froth. Oh. Granted, the controls for. Maybe I just suck at it. I guess they're yeah. probably not that bad. It took me a yeah. while. There was that one where you had to like weave it, but the, the, like yeah. I'm just like, what? I can't. I yeah. keep hitting trees. What yeah, is right. going on? Yeah. And then like I'll watch you do it. It's like oh, you're done. I'm like. Yeah. How? <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Use the Joy Cons, man. Because <laughs> I was that. using the Pro There is that. There is that. Oh man. But so, uh, no, the giveaway. Uh, for so I saw. I just happened to glance at the comments yeah. on the live version here. Uh, con- the giveaway is right now. There's a Gleam to IO link down in the description right now. It's live now. It is live from now until we record the next podcast. So till noon on Thursday. Noon, noon on Thursday. Just next give Thursday. us time to get the winner sorted out. Uh, and uh, we will be um, contacting you um, through uh, Gleam.io. I think they give like an email address or something. Whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get contact info and uh, get a hold of you. Uh, but you will not. We, I'm not going to do that until after we announce it to our patrons. Our ten dollar not patrons who will be watching the live stream mm-hmm. of of the rec- recording, and then after that, I'll be getting a hold of the people over the weekend to uh, sort that all out and figure out what we're gonna do and uh, what games you guys want to get, and uh, you know, obviously shipping addresses and all that stuff. We gotta mm-hmm. we gotta sort out. So, and I've I, I should probably go on my Amazon and delete some old shipping addresses from giveaways I've done in the past. I probably shouldn't keep those addresses in my Amazon. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> so I probably should delete those. Like, yeah, I, hey, I know where Darren's mom lives. Oh, there you go. Because I have her hey, address. Well, let's let's go. Address let's go Amazon. pay Darren a visit. Let's go pay Darren's mom a visit. He oh, lives yes. on his own now. So well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if I show up at his mom's house, I think he'll come over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. that's not awkward. Out, out at all. in New York. That's not awkward at all. Uh, no. I mean, I do want to go to Nintendo New York, so I'll just go hey. chill at his mom's house. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and drive. I think he lives like two hours outside of New York City. There you so go. It's still, yeah. well, that's outside of the city. So then you got to get into the city. So that's probably an additional three hours to get where you want to go in the <laughs> right. city. So right. Oh man. Um, I don't, what? I'm guessing I'm the driver then. Because are we I, I even mean, gonna based drive on, in well, New no, York no, City? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we do in LA. Yeah, but New York's even bigger. It's the yeah, biggest city in the United I, I States. I realize that, but... I mean, it's hard for me to imagine traffic worse than L.A., but I remember... Yeah, I know. I remember being I remember there, being out there... Or junior yeah, year. My junior year. Yeah, my senior, senior year. Yeah. And, like... Yeah. Dude, it, it was bumper-to-bumper bumper traffic everywhere. Yeah, that is true. I mean, it was almost faster to walk, I think. <laughs> That's probably true, too. That is probably true, too. 
I mean, the bottom line is, if I'm going there, I'm just going to get a shuttle and stay at a hotel that's near wherever Nintendo New York is. That's probably what I'll do. Yeah. Because I think Nintendo New York is, is, is close enough to Times Square. I don't think it's too far away from Times Square. And then, obviously, close enough to, to Broadway to go there and mm-hmm. go to some place. So. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, oh, there we I, go. Man. That sounds uh, like a fun time. I, I love. Dude, New York is really cool if you're in the right part And of I still town. have yet to go to the Even Chinatown, man. And I never actually got to go to the Statue Chinatown. of Liberty, and that peeved me off. Oh, they had it closed off that, that year. No, it, no, they still had it. Well, oh, you I, couldn't go into it. Yeah, you could go. You could go out to the island. But yeah, you well, yeah, we you went. Uh, we went it. out to the island. My group did, but we. Oh, that wasn't that exciting. Yeah, like it. Really, it was basically. Oh, here's a gift shop, and then here's the thing. What read about the history, yeah. and you're done. Yeah, but I never got to go out there. I was. I'm kind of mad. It wasn't that fun to me. So yeah, I it was like. Eh, uh, no, the boat ride out there was cool. Yeah. I like that. I just like being on a ferry. It's just kind of right. nice. Yeah, and feeling that air. And too, that salty. too bad we weren't out there when that the, salty, disgusting New York air. Yeah. <laughs> and too bad when we were out there when uh, Impractical Jokers were were doing that one oh. punishment because that would have been funny to be yeah, on that, that on that, that ferry going back through when they did their their one that, Statue of Liberty punishment. Oh, that would have been sweet. Um, anyways, or it'd be fun to be rich so I can finally go up into Statue of Liberty because they used to yeah. be able to go up into it up all the way up into the arm, but they don't let yeah. people do it anymore because it's too dangerous. Yeah. Um, do some repairs. Yeah. Make it safe. Come right, on. right, right. Um, anyways. Um, so what is your actual top five then? <laughs> to get back on topic. Super Mario Odyssey. Yes. Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Okay. Octopath Traveler. Okay. Golf Story. Splatoon 2. All right. Cool. I uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. Pokemon is flirting, but for now I'm going to put it on the outside. I think I enjoyed the other ones even more. Splatoon two, like Splatoon two, I, I do it. I've got like I, you do have a lot of hours. I have a lot of hours in that game. I like that game a lot, and I, I have so many fond memories playing with with our our, our streamers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Playing with our fans, like oh, it was such fun, so much fun, so much booze consumed yeah. playing that game. Let me tell you, I think I might have consumed more alcohol playing Splatoon two over the last two years than I've consumed in the past ten. So yeah, there's uh, there's, there's, there's been some that. fun. Mark Greenberg, you have made several of my Splatoon two streams. <laughs> <laughs> Nights that I do not remember. Yeah. <laughs> so are you sure Splatoon 2 is good? <laughs> From what I remember before, I can't remember. Yes, it was pretty gotcha, funny. gotcha. Um, gosh, got to do. Th- I think I this made me do. I got to do a throwback Splatoon 2 stream. Something. Yeah, there you now. go. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Anyways, um, you're welcome. It's been a long time. I'm gonna suck. Terror. I wasn't that good anyways, and I'm going to really suck. It's been so long. There's, like, new modes now and, I was like, stages, never and I, the game. I, I'm going to suck. Um, anyways, that being said, I guess I always suck, so what else is new? <laughs> um, our last topic, I know what it was, Media Create. So yeah. for those who don't know, um, I report on sales data at this channel. I uh, talk about MPD data. comes out once per month. Uh, that deals with the United States. And then uh, sometimes I talk about the U.K. charts. I don't talk about them often. Uh, because, you know, the sales numbers aren't huge there, but I talk about them when it's relevant, especially when there's new uh, Nintendo games released there. But um, we talk about the Japanese charts at least once a month, sometimes multiple weeks throughout a month, but at least once a month. And um, the go-to that we use for that is Media Create. Uh, Media Create is a company that tracks sales data for software and hardware uh, for video games. And Media Create, uh, there was a rumor floating out there last week that I didn't talk about because I didn't believe it, but it came true today uh media create will no longer be reporting sales data publicly uh to anyone so starting in april uh we will not be able to give you media create numbers unless we're a business and we pay them we are a business but i'm not paying them for the numbers <laughs> right. it's not happening yeah um they will i think i think they said they still will release whatever <sighs> the top 10 software are but they won't, they won't tell you the, they won't tell you the numbers um, and they just no said, they said they won't give the numbers for software, so maybe they're still going to give numbers for hardware. But I imagine that if they're just doing it as a slow roll, like we won't do give you software numbers, we'll still give you hardware. They're eventually going to take away hardware numbers. Oh yeah, too. for sure. Um, um, no, no, watch them. They'll tell you the top ten. They won't put it in any specific order. And conveniently, this happens around the time that Switch would be coming close to passing PlayStation Four. No, Sony didn't pay them to do this. <laughs> it's just a sure? just an interesting sure? interesting point. I, it's a conspiracy theory I've seen out there. Oh, conspiracy theories! They've been yeah. destroying my brain the past twenty four hours. <laughs> They've been our night. <laughs> oh my gosh! Creationist uh, and flat earthers. Oh yeah. I'm just. I don't even know what to think anymore. Um, I mean, I mean, I know what I believe, oh, but yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. I don't like, know what to think anymore. Wait, like, my brain I mean, is fried. Yes. My brain is fried in some of the stupidity. Yeah. Um, that being said, I think uh, 
We'll still be able to report on numbers um, because Famitsu uh, Magazine still reports sales data as well. Also, how long do you think it's going to take before somebody who pays for the numbers just gives them publicly? Them go publicly? I don't know because I think there'll probably be a stipulation that they can't do that. See, MPD numbers aren't released publicly, right? They like they don't have like the, a report you can go look at on a website anywhere to, that has public MPD data. Mm-hmm. But what you have are um, guys that work for MPD, like Matt Piscadell. He's an MPD analyst. Mm-hmm. Um, he com- he puts out a lot of the information every single month, and he's allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. So now the MPD doesn't give numbers anymore, exact numbers anymore. So it's kind of the same thing, but they you're able to extrapolate numbers. So basically what happens is MPD used to give numbers. So now when we hear what numbers are, like say – uh, we know that, say, Nintendo said they moved, they moved, you know, five million switches in December. Like Nintendo publicly stated that, and the following December, the MPD report or the following January, I guess, MPD comes out for December, and they're like, oh, sales are for Switch are twenty five percent ahead of last December. Well, if Nintendo told us numbers, we know it's twenty five percent more than that. You can do the math. Mm-hmm. And even if you, even if they didn't give you numbers, you can keep going back in the MPD data until there was numbers, mm-hmm. and you can keep extrapolating the data moving forward. Yeah. Or so I mean, you can so get you close can, enough. You can roughly. All, yeah, you can always basically figure out what the numbers still are Rough, because yeah, because roughly. there's the, okay. da- the data is there. But um, it's a little more work, but you can still figure it out. Media Create, you won't even be able to figure it out. Um, that being said, Famitsu still gives numbers, so we'll still be able to to track uh, and pay attention to the Japan. So some people say, "What's the big deal?" The big deal is that Famitsu numbers are widely considered to not be as accurate mm-hmm. as Media Create. Now the numbers are close; they've always been close. But Famitsu numbers always come out after Media Create, so you often wonder, are they close because they looked at the Media Create numbers for the dead theirs? I'm not saying that Famitsu is like, you know, VG charts where they're like making stuff up, <laughs> but Media Create literally tracked every retailer. Famitsu doesn't track every retailer. So they track some retailers and then they extrapolate for the ones they don't track, which is why they're not as accurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it will still be able to talk about some numbers and they're still going to be relatively true and, you know, we'll, we'll still be able to make our videos, but. One, the videos will come out later since Famitsu numbers don't come out at the same time. Um, usually they come out like 12 or 24 hours later. But I, I think it's I, – I just think it kind of sucks to see – I mean, I can't blame – okay. Media right. Create is the one putting in the time. Right. So I can't blame them for wanting to monetize it. Right. And it also does – I mean, MPD monetizes it too. you got to pay to access the report like if you actually want to read the, the report. Full and report. And MPD tracks, by the way, more than video games. So yeah. the MPD, the, it tracks all retail sales of everything mm-hmm. in the United States. So – um, right, uh, and you wonder. Oh crap! Where was it going with this? I don't know. I lost my I lost my train of thought. Do, Fantastic. Do, 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 yeah. Do. Oh, better not do that. Probably yeah. copyright strike right, for right. that. Um, God dang! Uh, I forgot where I was going with it. Keep going. Oh my gosh! Oh, uh, don't worry. I'll think of it in about a minute and a half. In a minute and a half, when we're done with the podcast, yeah, I don't really have anything much. else. I'm just. I don't like yeah. that they're doing oh. it, but I can't change it. So. I told you. I think about it in a second. Um, a minute and a half. I was close enough. Um, you wonder. It, it also depends on how much they're actually charging for it, too. I mean, if it's. I mean, yes, it's anything. Uh, watch, watch anything it be like better? A thousand for, a anything better? Anything. You know, that's more than free is crappy. But well, I just don't like it's not public anymore. Right, and that they probably won't let businesses put it public if they pay for it. Yeah, which is kind of. Weird because if you pay for the data, why? Well, because I mean, I guess because if you put it public, who? Why would all the businesses have to pay, pay for, for it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but. I get why. I don't know. I mean, they can do what they want. It's their data. Yeah. I just we've been so accustomed to getting it from them for years. It's been years. I mean, over. I think it's been over a decade that we've been getting media creating numbers. Like it feels so weird to. It's like the end of an era. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like if E3 ever gets canceled. Well, Some people right. already feel like it's the end of an it's, era for E3 because Sony's not going to be there. Right. Right. And like Sony's always been there. And now they're not going to be there. So for some people to, you know, if Sony, well, never come, if Sony never comes back to E3, that does feel like end of era. Well, Even Microsoft. And Microsoft's doing a press say, conference. Yeah. But they're not at the show the, floor. On the they're, E3 show they're floor. They're at their own building. They're, they're Granted, doing it at the same your time. Your E3 pass that you pay for, gets whether you it's there. a gamer pass or whether you have a media pass, for for the E3 convention that gets you in, so there's obviously some sort of partnership, and I'm sure the ESA gets some sort of money, mm-hmm. um, but um, not the same as obviously they would get if Microsoft had a booth inside the convention center still. But to be fair, Microsoft's theater, Nokia theater, is like 
like what a block and a half away. Yeah, it's not it's it, not that bad. It, it's not that bad. It just no. sucked that by the time we walked all the way there, it was closed. Right, but uh, that was our and, bad. But at that point in time, though, it was, that was we were bad. pretty much done. That was our bad. Yeah, I mean, maybe if we well, didn't have to wait in line for Pokemon twice. Yes, I forgot yeah. my badge. Yeah. Maybe if we had media passes. Yeah, there's that. Wouldn't have been a problem. There's that. Would have been done with everything hey, they want. Hey, E3, change your YouTube. Policy. policy. Yeah. I mean, I get they don't want to let everyone in, but man, why is it easier yeah. to get in with websites than it is to get in with YouTube? That shows your lack of respect towards YouTubers. And you know what? I say that and they'll be like, fine, we'll fix it. Now, websites are harder to get in. Yeah. I'm right. Like, yeah. Dang it. No. no That's dude. not what I meant. No, no. That's not what I meant. No, no. Not, now, instead of it being 10,000 hits per month to get one person in, it'll be 50,000 hits a day. Yeah, right. Hey. It's like it is for you. Stop video. giving them ideas. They don't watch our stuff. <laughs> I haven't applied yet because I'm afraid of being rejected. Oh, yeah, right. Like, I'm just like, okay, I don't think the website's going to qualify for even one badge. But, I mean, if we can get one badge, we're going. Yeah. For sure. Because whatever, we'll just buy one gamer pass. And yeah. Then we just need the one badge to get our equipment in. Yeah. That's the big yeah. thing. And then you can kind of do whatever you need to do. And we'll have the tripod. Yeah. Because you can bring a tripod. So I can yeah. technically record my own stuff. So it won't be that bad. Right. But then we could do all of the vloggy stuff or all of the yeah. interviews. You know, yeah. We could do that once the sure. person sure. gets in. Yeah. Plus, if I can <sighs> debate in, debate in this year on like bringing a nice mic with that I hook into the camera. Because I have a cord that will hook into the camera. Yeah. Whether or not it sounds good, I don't know because I've never tested. But yeah. I'm assuming it'll sound good. Yeah. I don't know. Or I, or I don't. Or I get a I get a setup that goes on top like the road mic does. Yeah, I mean, did and we ever mic. did we ever really test the road mic? The road did mic we, has been we, tested several times since I mean, that, since the it, trip. It worked fine yeah. for the whole trip. Yeah. It broke on the way home. Gotcha. And now I don't know. Again, I, I, what I'm not sure about is if it's the mic or the mic port. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, I plugged in other the lav mics into the mic port and had issues. But the lav mics are different. They're weird microphones. Mm -hmm. So you have to like use a converter to even make them work on a camera. Mm, fantastic. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, whatever. I'll probably just buy another road mic. I'll just buy a nicer one that's not so cheap. But I do want to figure out, obviously, if the port's broken before I do that. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll try an XLR cable into it, although it, it won't be as good because these need power. But um, mm -hmm. it still works without power. It's just not as loud. But yeah. I, I just need a way yeah. to test it to make sure there's no static. For sure, I'll figure it out. Maybe maybe I'll find someone around here who has like a cheap road mic for twenty bucks and just plug it in and find out. I, I've tried a different cable, so I know it's not cable. Okay. Uh, anyways, I think that's it. I don't really have much else to say. I'm just I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, I guess really, like I said, it makes my job on... harder and less accurate. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like yeah. that. Yeah. Until you find out it's actually relatively cheap and. Even then, I don't like it. Well, right. I'm not saying you. Have and you know, it's relatively like it, cheap. I gotta pay. I gotta convert currency to yens, and I just, gotta gotta I'm, use Google to translate it to like I, I, Japanese. And I'm trying to talk to him. I'm sure you're fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure you'll be fine. Because English does not translate well to Japanese. Yeah, so I'm sure. Very fine. difficult translation. The people that do it, like Bill Trinan. Yeah. Kudos, because yeah. I can't do that crap. Right. It all sounds in a way that if I say it, it's going to sound very racist. But that's what it yes. all sounds to me. Yes. I can't so help it. It's just what it sounds. Please do not it say all, it. It's what it sounds like. I can't. Yes, like, I know. Every time I hear Miyamoto or someone talk, I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It is the biggest gibberish. But, like, we sound yeah. like gibberish oh, to I them. So. I, yeah. So, I mean. I mean, I sound like gibberish to me. So uh, I sound like gibberish right now. Yeah. This that's entire just, podcast was a bunch of gibberish. It kind of was. You guys are all here just because it's a giveaway in the table. Yeah, probably. So, let's just be honest. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Yeah. Thanks for the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Yeah. Uh, episode 100. That's crazy. Uh, be sure to enter that giveaway, guys. Like, seriously. Uh, whether this is your first podcast ever or you've been here the whole time, this is for you guys. Uh, we really wanted to do something special for 100 episodes celebrating three years of doing this. Crazy. Uh, hopefully, here's to another three, six, nine, twelve. Let's go till I retire. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Wait. I Wait, mean, that's something. Yeah. Isn't that from a show or a commercial? Oh, my God. I know. See? Here. Oh, it's not a podcast if I don't make him face palm at least once. At least once. <laughs> Anyways, you can follow me on Twitter at Ninty Prime. Uh, you can follow Eric on Twitter at Emo8790. Uh, you can get our podcast online. I guess I'll do it this week. I put you on the spot the last couple yeah. weeks. Episode 100. I guess I'll do it. Uh, you can find our podcast audio-wise on podbean.com or through the Podbean app in, on iOS and Android. Uh, you can find it in iTunes if you have iOS. Uh, you could also find it on the Google Play um, podcast app through the Google Play Store. Uh, so it's there. 
You can also find it on patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. You can also find it on NintendoPrime.net. In fact, NintendoPrime.net is the only place where you can actually go back and see all 100 episodes um, because some of the episodes started on a different YouTube channel and all this stuff, and that YouTube channel doesn't really exist anymore. Some of the episodes got split up in multiple parts. Some of the audio wasn't on Podbean all the time. Bottom line is, the only way you can catch every single episode is on NintendoPrime.net. If you ever want to go back and look at the deep diving history of of this podcast and see all the different sets yeah, and right. see when you can pick yeah. up when the green screen sets changed without <laughs> hearing me saying that I changed the sets. Just like, see if you could figure out when, it, yeah. when that changed. Yeah, right. um, and when the mic changed and all the quality changes. Yeah. Like it's kind of cool going back through all that. Uh, you could obviously get the video version. There's only one video version right here on YouTube releases at 10 a.m. on Mondays, or unless you are a $10 backer on patreon.com slash Nintendo prime, you can catch it on Thursdays. $5 a month is for that audio version to get it a day early. Uh, and yeah, twenty dollars a month, you can be on an episode of the podcast. So that you can, that's pretty cool. Right, next week we have a patron on. I forget which one, but we have a patron on next week. Yeah. So that should be fun. Yeah. I want to guess tune in episode one hundred. Yeah. Now this is where I tried to get party poppers at the dollar store, but they didn't work. What? Yeah. Th- Seriously? Like they always work, right? Even yeah. the cheapos. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I gotta try it. Nothing. Next one. Nothing. All the cor- all the strings just kept pulling. Just out. pulling out. Yeah. Not oh, popping. Fantastic. So. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, fake confetti. Poof. Post editing that might not happen. <laughs> so it'll just look like fun, just us going like this. Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we'll see you next week for episode 101, and to announce the winners of our hundredth episode giveaway. Thank you guys. Peace out. <laughs>